we were mentioning before when we were defining what heat and temperature are, that heat energy always flows from hot objects to cold ones. We also have the law of conservation of energy, and that tells us that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So that means if one object's losing energy, something else has to be gaining that same amount of energy. Or mathematically speaking, uh, the Q gained by one object is going to equal the Q lost by another object. You'll see here that the one side I have a negative on because we said when a, an object is losing heat energy, when energy is being released, the value of that Q is going to be negative. So if we substituted in mc delta t for our Qs, we get this mc delta t equals negative mc delta t. The heat gained by one object gets transferred to another object. Um, it comes from another object, I should say. Um, so mathematically speaking, it does not matter which object you make the positive side and which one you make the negative side algebra-wise, but you guys will see that on, on my answer keys, I'm always going to make the object that's warming up, the one that's absorbing heat energy, the positive Q, and whatever object is cooling down, releasing heat energy, I'm going to make that one my negative Q. Algebraically, it doesn't make a difference, but um, just for consistency's sake, for chemistry's sake, it makes a little bit more sense to write it that way. If I had to pick one mistake that people make when they do these heat transfer problems is that people forget the negative sign on one side. So if you, if you take away one piece of advice from this type of problem, the MC delta T equals negative MC delta T, don't forget your negative, don't forget your negative, don't forget your negative. Okay, uh, so let's try one of these guys. So if we're cleaning up from cooking dinner, we take a 2,500 gram iron pan, originally at 95, and we put it into a sink full of 22 degree water. They tell us the final temperature is 25, and we want to know how much water must have been in the sink. So again, our equation is going to be mc delta t equals negative mc delta t. So our uh, pan is our hot object out of these two. It's starting at 95 degrees. So I'm just going to write that here. Our iron pan is at 95. And then our water in this problem is relatively cool because the water starts at 22. I'm going to go back for just a second and remind you our definition of heat and what heat is. So if I scroll back and we look at our definition, we said that heat is a type of energy that's transferred, that moves around because of a temperature difference. If there is not a temperature difference between two objects, there's no heat that's flowing between them. The energy transfer wouldn't occur because it only happens if there's a temperature difference. So if you put a hot object into a cold object, the heat from that hot object is going to leave the iron pan and try to warm up the water. Well, as the water absorbs that heat energy, its temperature starts to come up. Eventually, they kind of meet at this temperature somewhere in the middle. Their final temperature is this somewhere in the middle, 25. The final temperature of 25 degrees is for both objects. And that's always the case, that the final temperature of the two objects is going to match. Because when they hit 25 degrees, when they hit that somewhere in the middle temperature, the heat is going to stop flowing from the iron pan and into the water because there's no need for the heat energy to leave the pan anymore when they're both at 25 degrees. So keep that in mind. That's another big thing to take away is that the T final 
is always going to be the same value for both objects. So what I'm going to do in this problem, our water is the object that's warming up. So I'm going to put everything about the water on the left hand side of this equation. And my iron pan is the thing that's cooling down and releasing the heat energy. So the, I'm going to put everything about the iron on the right hand side of my equation. So when I go to set this guy up, uh, we're trying to figure out what the mass of the water is, right? That's the part, the component we don't know. So I'm going to plug in M. Now I need the C value for water. So I would go to my chart and find the C value. It's a sink full of liquid water, right? So I'm going to use that number 4.184 as our value for C. Now I need the delta T. So the T final for my uh, iron and the water for both objects is 25. The water started at 22. We're going to set that equal to on the other side negative, don't forget your negative, our iron pan is cooling down. We know the mass of the iron pan, they told us was 2,500 grams. I need the C value of my iron pan. So I go back to my chart and I need the C value for iron. It's an iron pan, so that's a solid. So I'm gonna use the number 0.449 joules per gram degree C. And now for my delta T, the iron pan stops transferring heat energy once it hits 25 degrees, but it started at 95. Now it's just an algebra problem where we have to solve for that M. We know all the other components of that problem. When you throw that guy in your calculator, uh, the mass of our water, you should get your calculator will tell you 6,259.958. I'm going to round my mass to just two sig figs because my temperatures had two, uh, this mass here had two. So I'm going to take this guy and round it to just two sig figs. So it's a roughly 6,300 grams worth of water in that sink.